A very good evening, everybody. My name is Dev Nagar, and uh, I feel very honored and proud to be representing Swadhya Youth Organization India, along with my lovely colleagues Sarvani and Farhan. First of all, I would like to extend my heartiest congratulations to all of you, and specifically the Students Chemical Society of Nigeria for putting on an amazing summit themed around SDGs. When we talk about climate change, we see that it has created several challenges that pose a very serious threat to our collective security and existence. Amidst this grim, grim situation, young people like you and I are bringing in some hope for change and betterment. We see that climate change is not an isolated issue, and it affects the vulnerable communities disproportionately. So the action to combat climate change, to combat the changing environment, has to stem from all sections of our world, from all sections of our society. And the onus to drive, catalyze, and accelerate that climate action is on is on young people like you and I. So this summit is very important, and it comes at a very crucial time when reports like IPCC have clearly mentioned that we are not left with a lot of time. Without further ado, I would like uh, to invite my colleague Sarvani, who would be talking about her experience of living a vegan and sustainable lifestyle. She would be sharing some of the very crucial tips with all of you, which can be easily adapted through within your lifestyles. And next, uh, after Sarvani would be speaking Farhan, who would be sharing Swadhyaya's journey as a youth collective from us, from a group of six students to a global collective driving action across all spheres. So thanks once again and congratulations to you, Sarvani. So uh, hey everyone, I'm Sarvani and I'm the project coordinator for Project Planet Heroes at Swadhyaya Youth Organization. First of all, thank you so much, Simon, for inviting me and SESN for having me as well and letting Swadhyaya Youth Organization be a part of this amazing event. So before I delve into the topic of the day, let me share a little bit about Project Planet Heroes Wing of Swadhyaya. Our main aim is to bring sustainability to you, one project at a time. We brainstorm and come up with projects that make sustainable living easier in the community. Living sustainably can seem very overwhelming, especially if you don't know where to start. And we are here to break it down for you every step of the way. Our flagship project is the Project Planet Heroes Peer Mentorship Program that was launched on April 22, 2020, on the occasion of Earth Day. The Peer Mentorship Project was designed for those people who are just starting out their eco-friendly journey or those who wish to explore and learn more about living a sustainable lifestyle. We at Swadhyaya curated a 12-week course to teach the applicants about the A to Zs on leading a sustainable lifestyle. Uh, and why we call it the Peer Mentorship Program is because each applicant is assigned a specific mentor to assist and guide them whenever necessary to make this program as personalized as possible and as fruitful as possible. So if you wish to check out our work, you may follow us on Instagram at swadhyaya.change. So uh, yeah, so that's all about Swadhyaya from my side. And uh, on to the topic of the day. Today, I'm going to be talking a little bit about sustainable living and how small things matter. Now, before going into that, let's understand what sustainability means. Now, there are a couple definitions of sustainability. The most famous one uh, being that, um, that all of us have heard is that sustainability focuses on meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of the future generations to meet their needs. Now, we only have one Earth, and this one Earth has a certain amount of resources. If these resources are used up at a high rate by us through overconsumption, it becomes a big problem for future generations uh, as they will not have enough uh, resources and life will not sustain on this planet. Uh, we are mainly ruining resources in two ways. Number one is through overconsumption, which basically means using more than what we need. And the second is polluting the resources that we have. So these two are things we should be mindful of and most tips around sustainability mainly aim at reducing these two. And uh, sustainability mainly uh, stands on three uh, pillars. One is environment, the second is economy, and the third is ethics. Only when all three are satisfied equally is something considered truly sustainable. In the current world, economy is being given full attention, while ethics and the environment are being cast aside. Uh, 
This leads to inhumane practices such as those occurring in the fast fashion and animal, animal agriculture industry, as well as rapid rates of environmental degradation. So what is the point of all of this money and glory if the future generations will have to suffer because of it, right? So what does it mean uh, to be sustainable or lead a sustainable lifestyle? Major corporations are the true evil, but there are smaller actions that we as consumers can uh, do, uh, as well as uh, this influences corporations to take a turn for the good. We don't understand the we don't understand the power that we hold as consumers. Businesses run to satisfy our needs and our wants. So if we as a community say no, we are not going to support this. Then businesses will not have any option but to change the products and practices. So what do I mean when I say support? Support mainly means in the form of money. So if we find a product that's not sustainable, for example, plastic bottles. By simply not purchasing it, it brings down the demand for it. And if businesses of and since businesses are fueled by demand, they'll have no choice but to uh, produce something that we want and are willing to buy. For example, uh, water that comes in biodegradable bottles as opposed to plastic bottles. And uh, I like even though I said main support is in the form of money, it doesn't always have to be in the form of money. So, for example, uh, when we go to grocery stores, uh, simply by saying no to a plastic bag. This reduces the demand for a plastic bag, and more eco-friendly alternatives are given the opportunity to shine. Now, you may think, what is the point of just you know one person doing it? How will one person uh, bring down demand? Well, think of it like this: if you say no to a plastic bag, the person in line behind you might hear you, and there are two possibilities of what scenarios that can play out here. One, they may think. Hey, why is this person, you know, saying no to a plastic bag? And they may go home and search about it and and educate themselves, and as well as discuss it with like uh, their other peers. Or um, like possibility number two is that they also get inspired by you and they also say no to a plastic bag. And um, add, in addition to this, when you're carrying your stuff around in your own bag in your hand uh, or in your hand, you make a statement. Uh, the ten people who see you on your way home. may be inspired to do the same and those 10 people will inspire 10 more people each and that's how mass behavioral change happens and that's how we as consumers can make large scale impact so by you doing something as simple as saying no to a plastic bag you create so much change and this is why every small action matters and in the next 15 to 20 minutes i'm going to be telling you about many small actions that you can take to make big change now it's very important for you to remember that being sustainable much like sexuality is not binary it's a spectrum it's not all or nothing so that's what people fail to understand there's a very famous saying which i'm sure you have heard of which says we don't need a few people doing it perfectly we just need many people doing it imperfectly so this basically means that just because you can't follow a certain sustainable practice doesn't mean you have to stop all of them even if you're able to do two out of the 10 things that i tell you today that's amazing because it's certainly creating more impact than someone who's doing zero out of 10 so even if you can only do one thing go for it and do the best you can at it right so uh, first let's address the most basic and the most widely known uh, sustainability tip which is stop using plastic uh, this may sound very vague and you know very Uh, I don't know, vague. So let me just elaborate a little bit on it and tell you the different different ways in which we can do so. So first, uh, we know that plastic is uh, non-biodegradable. It seeps uh, toxins into soil. Uh, it is harmful to marine life and basically stays in our environment forever and causes nothing but harm. So the biggest evil and the most used and thrown away single-use plastic item of all time is plastic bags. And some and some ways in which we can avoid the use of plastic bags are. uh number 1 is carrying uh items by hand and number 2 is if you have a backpack or like a handbag with you then using them to store carry those items number 3 is uh take reusable cloth bags with you wherever you go and you know just pop one in every bag that you have so that you're never caught in a situation where you don't have a bag and number 4 is basically reuse plastic bags so if you go to a grocery store and you get plastic bags Don't throw them out or anything, or don't you know just dispose of them. Just keep them with you. There's this very cool uh, uh, plastic bag folding method called called the triangle method. So if you just search, look that up. It'll tell you a very neat way to fold these bags uh, in a compact and nice manner. And you can just pop these bags into each and every one of your bags because 
when folded plastic bags take up much less space than cloth bags so if you find for cloth bags bulky to carry around you can just reuse the same plastic bag that you get because the main motive is just to not let these bags go and pollute the environment or end up in landfills or and other such manners and always 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 remember a few minutes of convenience is not worth supply supporting the supply and demand chain of plastic bags so like i said more uh, like i said before more plastic bags are only produced if we keep using them and uh, the same applies to disposable cutlery um so instead of using disposable plastic disposable cutlery you can use biodegradable cutlery made out of natural materials or you can also invest in reusables such as a reu reusable straw and carry a set of reusable spoons and forks with you just in case in case you might ever need it or if you go to a restaurant which does not serve in reusable does not serve reusable cutlery so it doesn't honestly doesn't take up much space in your bag and uh, this also extends to using uh, reusable tumblers or drink cups um, and reusable boxes to pack leftovers when you go out to eat and uh, this both reduces uh, food wastage as well as plastic consumption so it's a win win and again uh, one more tip could be uh, don't buy plastic toothbrushes uh, use the bamboo ones as you know the handle can be composted and again this does not mean throw away the plastic toothbrushes that you have at home uh, the ones you have at home please use them first and then throw them because there's no point if they they're going to end up in the same place anyway so you might as well get some use out of it and delay the process of you throwing them and um, you know delay the process of entering the environment right so use them first before throwing away all of them and uh plastic becomes a major problem when it ends up in places it's not supposed to such as the ocean or in the soil so make it a point to reuse as much as you can before discarding something uh next let's look at electricity consumption so electricity is generated in many ways uh, and the most mainstream way being by the burning of fossil fuels so the more energy we consume the more we contribute to the burning of fossil fuels uh, and this obviously causes global warming and it depletes the earth resources as well so some ways in which you can reduce uh, your electricity consumption are using natural light and ventilation by turning off lights and fans during the day uh, especially turning off fans when it's windy outside so open the windows enjoy some natural fresh air which is um, good for your mental health good for your physical health and just good for the planet in general so that's awesome and uh, obviously only do this when pollution levels are low and it's safe for you to do so and uh, one more thing could be going for energy saving appliances when you buy like your next uh, fridge or oven this consumes less electricity and it definitely saves a lot of money in the long term so uh, now we've all started using devices smartly and it's time for us to start uh, sorry we've all started using smart devices so it's time for us to start using devices smartly and what do i mean by using devices smartly it means uh, being conscious and putting your devices on low power mode so that lesser amount of energy is consumed uh, putting your devices in sleep mode or hibernate mode when you're not using them uh, lowering brightness levels and enabling the auto off feature so if you're not using your lap phone for like 5 minutes it turns off on its own if you forget to switch it off so these are a few effective ways to do so and one more way in which you can reduce your electricity consumption is uh, reducing the usage of water heaters we've become habituated to showering with hot water but it's not always necessary and cold showers have numerous health benefits so if you live with someone who uses a heater try taking a shower after them most of the time there's some remainder of hot water which is more than enough to last you like a good 5 minute shower and showers are not supposed to last more than 5 minutes anyways so that will kind of take it sort sort of time for you to you know like when to stop showering and uh, some other ways are unplugging your devices once they are fully charged shutting down devices when they are not in use uh, turning off lights and fans when they are not in use uh, turning off switches or you know charging outlets so when something is not charging and when something is not is not um, Uh, charging, but the switch is still on. There is still a minimal amount of electricity being consumed, and over a point, a period of time, this may amount up to a big, uh, like a big uh, amount of electricity that's being consumed. So be sure to just unplug and switch off everything uh, when it's not being used and nothing is being charged. So now let's move on to water. Right, and uh, as we all obviously know, water is a very valuable resource. So let's look into how we can reduce the consumption of water. 
the most obvious thing uh, one can do is turning off apps for not in use. Uh, this can be when we are brushing teeth, when we are doing the dishes, when we are washing our hands, and when we are washing vegetables. As we mostly tend to leave the tap running uh, when we are not rinsing um, rinsing them. We just like the tap is running while we are doing something over here. So these uh, these moments are like the prime moments of water is left running. So be mindful and turn off the taps uh, during these uh, times. And obviously, we use up lots and lots of water in the bathroom. So uh, ways to save water in the bathroom can be uh, by not using a bathtub as um, and taking baths in a bathtub as they use up a huge amount of water. Uh, keeping showers as short as possible, and even actually using a bucket and a mug while uh, taking showers. This is a practice that's very common in India, and it saves a tremendous amount of water because. So very mindful of the water that you pour over your body, and you don't end up leaving the tap just on while you're, uh, you know, soaping yourself or something. So it helps you save a huge amount of water. And uh, like how previously I talked about energy saving appliances, there are also appliances uh, which are water efficient. So do invest in such appliances the next time, uh, for example, you buy a dishwasher or a washing machine. Uh, invest in like water saving appliances along with energy efficient appliances which again saves you both water and saves money as well and now we're done with water let's move on to diet right so your diet makes up a huge portion of your water footprint um so don't waste any food uh try to not consume any uh, food items that, were, that are water intensive such as meat milk rice and etc and uh, one more thing uh, is that also that when you're using washing machines and dishwashers only turn them on uh, when they're fully loaded and you know fixing leaking taps are also is another key way to do so so uh, now let's move on to ways uh, in which we can save trees uh, buying products made out of recycled paper reduces the need for new trees to be cut down Refrain from buying paper products that are made from virgin paper. Uh, it's always written on the book or whatever that it's used making virgin paper. So try to avoid that as much as possible. Refrain from buying paper products that are made from virgin paper. Uh, and when buying materials that are made from recycled paper, look for the percentage of recycled paper. It should be there somewhere um, on there. And if it's there, then that's awesome. And buy items that have the highest percentage of recycled paper. And when you're buying paper, try buying paper that has F the FSC label. It's called the Forest Stewardship Council label. As that label is mostly, is, is basically sustainably sourced paper and it's more kinder to the environment. And uh, there are different FSC labels. So do like look up and see what each one means and try opting for other paper alternatives such as bamboo paper or uh, bagasse paper or there's even something called stone paper. So they're much better than, you know, cutting down trees and making paper from them. And now there's actually even a way that you can make a paper at home from the US paper you have. So there are many tutorials uh, online. So just do look them up. It's very, it's very fun. It can be a nice weekend activity and it helps you uh, not throw paper into the bin. Because even if we send paper for recycling, there's a very low chance of it getting recycled because uh, most of the times it's contaminated and you know that reduces its recycling, the, its ability to be recycled. And um, I have one more wonderful tip for you when it comes to saving trees. So the, instead of using Google as your search engine, use Ecosia. So the spelling is E-C-O-S-I-A, Ecosia. It is available both in app form for mobile devices and you can also set it up as a default browser in your laptop. So it's an eco-friendly search engine that uses its profit generated and the remuneration generated to plant trees. So you can do something as simple as look up a definition of the word and contribute to afforestation. So there's nothing, it's, it's, it's the most mindless task you can do and still do something good to the planet. So do um, go for that as opposed to using Google because it's definitely much more eco-friendly. And uh, my final suggestion for saving trees is to become a plant parent yourself or gift someone plants instead of material possessions. Uh, there are several low maintenance plants that reduce indoor air pollution and make your health, your living space more healthy, happy and relaxing. So buying plants is something and gifting plants is something that should definitely be normalized and uh, widely adopted. So now uh, let's move on to diet. Diet makes up a huge portion of our carbon footprint and we can just create a huge impact only by changing the way in which we eat. So reducing the amount of meat, milk, seafood and dairy products in itself creates a tremendous Im impact and this if you don't know already it's called a vegan or a plant-based diet and it's becoming increasingly popular. If you want to find out more about this I would suggest watching the documentaries 
cowspiracy or seaspiracy, uh, which will give you tons of information as to why people do this and, you know, give you more facts and figures to help you clear stuff out and uh, ways in which you can do so as well. And it will help you, like, make a more informed decision. And uh, basically, adopting a whole foods plant-based diet is one of the best ways you can help save the planet. Now, the next step would be to, uh, in terms of diet, would be to buy local produce so that your food doesn't have to travel long distances. And um, you should also reduce buying processed, packaged and canned food. Uh, you can check out Swadhyaya's uh, YouTube and Instagram for some delicious uh, plant-based vegan recipes. And um, now we're done with diet. Uh, now, the next thing I want to talk about is for all of you menstruators out there, so single-use sanitary napkins or pads and tampons pose a significant threat to the environment as they are non-biodegradable and take around 500 to 800 years for the pads to decompose. These pads constitute of 90% plastic and this plastic is obviously single-use plastic which has the largest carbon footprint. The cotton used in these products as well is not organic and it's treated with synthetic and chemical materials and the cultivation of cotton is a very, very water-intensive process. It requires six pints of water just to go a little bud of cotton so it's very water intensive and it's not eco-friendly at all and uh, most pads contain polyethylene which is an adhesive used to make the pad uh, stick to your underwear which is basically an environmentally harmful pollutant and uh, most tampons contain chemicals uh, chemicals such as dioxin chlorine and rayon which gets soaked up by the earth in landfills and pollute uh, groundwater and air now, yeah, adding on to this again, if all these facts weren't enough already, uh, the plastic back strip of a sanitary napkin, the one you peel off, um, as well as plastic tampon applicators, uh, both of which are they are basically made from low density polyethylene, which is particularly damaging to the planet. They not only take centuries to break down, but also require high amounts of fossil fuel to make. And along with being harmful to the planet, they're extremely harmful to your body as well. So now let's explore the eco-friendly alternatives out there and why we should opt for um, them instead. So the environmental uh, benefits of sustainable menstruation products create significant, applaudable and a positive impact on the planet. And every menstruator's contribution to this transition from disposable to sustainable menstrual products uh, matters a significant amount because we use a, like a lot of... Uh, uh, menstruation products from the time that we start and to the time that we end. So uh, being mindful in these decisions can create a huge impact. So the sustainable alternatives which consist of menstrual cups, cloth pads and period underwear, all three are re reusable, they're good for the environment, uh, they're good for you and they're very light on your wallet. So moreover, once you uh, invest in a menstrual cup or a set of reusable cloth pads, you don't need to buy uh, pads every month. You won't have to buy pads again for like maybe like five, even 10 years, making it a one-time investment. And um, it really saves money in the long term. And another alternative is to, is even biodegradable, biodegradable pads. They still do generate waste, but since it's biodegradable waste, it's much less harmful to the planet than single-use plastic bags, making them a better option any day. So that's it for menstruation. And now let's talk about reducing food waste. So, uh, wasting food basically means wasting resources that are used to grow um, our food, which is basically water, soil, and energy. And the energy used to process, package, and transport food from markets to our homes. Unused, spoiled, or wasted food is sent to the landfills, where it rots and becomes a significant source of methane, which is a potent greenhouse gas with 21 times global warming potential of carbon dioxide. And decomposing food scraps in dumping grounds can also uh, contaminate so ground and surface water. And um, reducing the amount of food waste in landfills will over time reduce the impact on, of waste on the environment and public health as well. So how do we tackle such waste? Uh, we can, you know, use vegetable scraps uh, by planting uh, those to, you know, regrow food or like basically turn them into house plants. Or we can boil uh, vegetable scraps for stock. We can even compost them, um, etc. But the first step to reducing food waste is cutting it at its source, which basically means just don't waste food. Uh, storing food correctly, uh, not buying more than what you need, and not throwing away leftovers and consuming them the next day, 
uh, as well as buying fruits and vegetables that don't look perfect, which is basically something called buying ugly food, which is uh, which is becoming a popular movement. Um, and these are all ways in which you can reduce food waste um, in addition to composting at home or donating food uh, kitchen waste to people who do compost, which uh, reduces the burden on the landfills that we have. So these are a few ways in which you can reduce food waste. And I'm sure there are several more ways. But again, the rule of thumb is just don't buy more than what you need and that solves half the problem there itself. So when you go for like uh, parties with a buffet system, do not serve yourself more than what you need. And when you at a restaurant, just do not buy more than what you need. These, these are just significant like ways in which you can reduce food wastage. And even if you do buy more than what you need, be sure to have reusable containers with you so you can pack the food and take them home and have it the next day. So that's it for food wastage. Now let's talk about shopping sustainably. Uh, the first aspect of this would be online shopping. Try not to shop online even if it's just a few items. If at all shopping online is a must, then order as many items as you can in one order. And uh, especially like this is only effective if it's from the same supplier. And order from companies that use as little packaging as possible. If the store is nearby, try walking or cycling. And this even kind of helps you get like a little bit of exercise. And if at all you are driving to the store, Make a shopping list beforehand and get everything you need to avoid taking multiple trips. And so, and while you are shopping online, try selecting a slower delivery option. If you don't opt for fast delivery, you're giving the retailer room to choose the most efficient delivery rather than you know forcing it to get sent to you in the fastest manner, which may not be the most sustainable all the time. And the next aspect is fast fashion. Fast fashion involves rapidly produ producing high amounts of clothing. Trendy clothes are made using like low quality materials in order to make great looking clothes available for the public for a very, very cheap price. Amazing, right? Not really. So these uh, cheaply made trendy pieces have resulted in harmful uh, impacts uh, on the environment, garment workers and especially consumers' wallets. Fast fashion requires tons of water, pollutes uh, natural waterways and uh, puts microfibers, which are basically plastic, into our oceans, which eventually enter our own bodies when we consume seafood. And along with this, it, it produces a lot of textile waste, generates greenhouse gas emissions, and deposits chemicals into our soil. It severely, severely depletes the earth of its resources and pollutes it at the same time. Along with this, there are ethical concerns too. Garment workers are paid way, way, way below what the minimum wage is. If something is priced so cheap, someone somewhere has to pay the price for it. And it's mostly the garment workers who pay the price. They are made to work for extremely long hours and their salary is almost next to nothing. So if you support fast fashion, you are supporting the exploitation of several workers who make the clothes you wear. These laborers belong to Asian countries such as India, China, Cambodia, Bangladesh, uh, Thailand and Myanmar. And uh, next, let's talk about how it affects your wallet. Because because you would think that buying clothes for a cheap price would be wallet friendly, but sadly that's not the case. These clothes are made from very cheap quality material and can be worn only two to three times. After which they have to be thrown away due to wear and tear. And this basically leads you to spending more on clothes because those clothes are of such cheap quality they don't last long. And uh, basically. What you can do is just avoid buying fast fashion uh, from fast fashion companies such as H&M and Zara and all of that. And you can get a list of fast fashion companies online and you would be surprised to know what companies are even considered fast fashion because you would have probably been shopping from them for a very long time. So how can we go around fast fashion? How can we shop more sustainably? Thrift shopping is one way. So thrift shopping, uh, practicing minimalism, basically, which means buying what you need and not having like a wardrobe full of clothes. Because honestly, you just need like a pair, like you just need like a pair of bottoms and a pair of tops just to survive. You don't need to consistently change your outfits and, you know, wear something new every time. And along with this, uh, buying from sustainable brands, uh, choosing locally produced clothing, uh, choosing organic and natural fabrics and not synthetic fabrics which contain plastic and increasing the life cycle of clothes by repairing and recycling uh, and upcycling them are some of the ways you can be sustainable when it comes to fashion. The very, very last topic that I want to cover today is digital carbon footprint. So uh, what is digital carbon footprint? Chances are that you've never heard of digital carbon footprint and, you know, they're just confused. And this is a very, very mind-blowing topic, so stay with me on this. So basically, data on the internet is essentially invisible. And because of that, we don't even think of the impact that it has. 
but all the data that we put on the internet is just processed and stored in these data centers around the world. So these centers are powered 24 by 7 and obviously they're powered using fossil fuels and they're just waiting to send information. Um, and uh, them being part of fossil fuels, they release massive carbon um, emissions. So what do I mean by what do I even mean by data centers, and what sort of information is stored uh, in data centers? So information stored can be in the form of personal documents uploaded on the on the cloud. So basically, stuff you have on iCloud or stuff you have on Google Drive is all stored in these data centers, and the information stored can be in the form of like. Um, podcasts as well so podcasts you may find on apple music or like spotify uh, music you can find on spotify memes and posts on instagram and even messages sent on instagram and um youtube videos and all the movies and shows on all streaming websites such as netflix and amazon prime and all and uh, messages which are uh, stored on the cloud for example whatsapp is stored physically so that's not counted as cloud but instagram messages they are stored on the cloud telegram messages they're stored on the cloud so um, basically everything that the internet offers. So all of this and even your uh, Gmail. So it's not stored in a, as long as something is not stored in a physical location, it is not uh, something that can be accessed when you're offline. So for example, if you don't have internet connection, you cannot access Gmail. So that's one way to know that Gmail um, emails are stored on the cloud and they contribute to um, carbon footprint. Like, uh, sorry, massive carbon emissions. And yeah. So basically, if something is not downloaded and stored in a physical device, uh, in a physical device, it is stored in these data centers, which are out of sight and out of mind. But like I said, these data centers are powered 24 by 7 by fossil fuels, which I mentioned in the beginning, and this leads to massive carbon emissions. So basically, we don't realize the impact that it has since it's cleverly masked by convenience, but all of this majorly contributes to a digital carbon footprint. So what are the ways in which you can reduce a digital carbon footprint? Uh, first is uh, turning off tracking. So data tracking services use tons of information and on nearly every single uh, website you visit, data about you is transmitted to dozens and even hundreds of companies. So uh, setting your preferences to the strict setting will block uh, most data transfers and processing and this also equates to lesser energy being used. Number two is download and not stream. So basically uh, streaming music and videos Add to your digital carbon footprint. So opting to download rather than stream means that you'll pull the data from the server only once. So only once is the data pulled from the server and downloaded and you don't have to access it again and again. Um, and yeah, so if streaming, uh, stream on Wi-Fi rather than mobile data and stream on small devices if possible and keep the resolution as low as possible, uh, especially if watching on small devices because if you're watching on small devices, you won't need such high resolution in order for stuff to be clear. And number three is deleting emails. So uh, again, like I said, uh, Gmail and any other emailing platform uh, 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 has data that's stored on these in these data centers. So basically, what you can do is unsubscribe from email lists that you don't read or you don't need. Uh, delete spam emails. Uh, delete emails after reading them if you don't need them for future reference. And do not subscribe to newsletters if and email lists if you know you're not gonna read you're not gonna read them. So one simple thing that I like to follow every day is just deleting 10 emails every day. So I think every email has uh, some 0.04 grams of carbon that's emitted into the environment. And um, and um, if an email has like some sort of attachment, I think it's 4 grams of carbon. I'm not too sure about this, but it's a significant amount of carbon. So once you're done with an email, just delete it if you're not going to need it for future reference. Uh, that's one of the greatest ways you can do so. So what I basically do is I delete 10 emails because it's very hard sitting and deleting everything at a go. So a practice I like to follow is deleting 10 emails every day and it's it won't even take like one minute and it just it's it's a quick way it's a small way you can contribute to the environment every single day. And uh, the next point is also related to uh, streaming sites. It's basically blocking video autoplay. So I think you've noticed if you scroll through Netflix or any other uh, data, uh, video streaming site, the preview begins to autoplay. So playing videos uses more energy. So just nip it at the bud by stopping videos you don't even want to watch in the first place. Right? So um, I guess that's enough for today. Uh, I think I've covered a lot and I don't want it to get too overwhelming even though there's a lot more stuff that I don't want to cover. Uh, I really hope this helps uh, somebody or the other. And again, uh, once again, I want to thank SCSN and Simon for inviting me to give this talk. Uh, basically, I very briefly touched on the topics today and didn't go too much into detail. 
if you have any doubts regarding these uh, please feel free to reach out to me on instagram so i have uh, so my instagram is environmentalist and vani v a n i so you can always reach out to me if you have any doubts regarding anything and once again uh, thank you so much simon and scs for this opportunity uh, i'm glad to have been presented swadhyay thank you so much thank you so much sir vani this was uh, like really really wonderful uh, I'll, i shall stop recording now all right Greetings, everyone. Uh, I'm Farhan, representing Swadhyay Youth Organization, New Delhi, India. Once again, I would like to thank uh, Simon Thomas and the Students Chemical Society for giving us this opportunity. Um, today, I'm not going to give you any lecture on any specific topic because uh, uh, from the last three days, uh, you might have already gathered able advice from the experts of the field. from various different backgrounds rather today i am interested in sharing swadhyay's experience of uh, our journey uh, from understanding and being inspired by sdgs also known as the global goals to inspiring advocating and calling to actions for achieving the global goals so moving on um it all started this is a journey of swadhyay it started in 2019 uh with six friends who wanted to understand the issues faced by the local communities and find some strategic substantive and innovative solutions uh for the same uh in short they just wanted to help and give back to the society from where they came from and they considered themselves the privileged one and they wanted to help out the one who didn't have that much of privileges so with that uh, with this in mind they uh, we started with the initiative we called swadhya which uh, means uh, self introspection so the aim was to initiate a change starting from ourselves to leading the change in different individuals and uh, move, uh, making a mass movement out of it and making it a community level and national level and a global level change as the motto of our organization says the change begins from self uh, we initiated the change we started development in ourselves and we we wanted to be the change the change we we want to see in the world <clears throat> so as uh, as we initiated the organization uh what we wanted out of it is to make a safe space safe inclusive and non judgmental space for everyone for everyone around us and for everyone from every walks of the life to join us and give their inputs their uh concerns and their opinions and they would never be uh, judged on that they would never be judged on their opinions their their being their identity or anything like it's non judgmental safe space where diversity and different thoughts and opinions are invited and embraced so with this in mind we mo- we moved on and so today after 2 years since we started we are a global youth collective having members around the 11 countries worldwide working on the intersection of uh, climate change and human rights so in this journey uh, from from un, from being uh, from inspiring to understand to making a change we have learned a lot of stuff and i just want to share three points three important lessons which we have learned in our journey with you first lesson so the very first lesson is understanding the ground reality uh so the initial days of swadhyas uh we went on a field trip a lot of uh, surveys we did with the vulnerable communities just to understand uh what all sufferings they face uh in the uh, in in their livings and uh, what problems they face and to come up with a better solution <clears throat> and the second point like second lesson which we learned is empathy and diversity is the key so as a organization the like the aim of the organization was to make 
an inclusive non-judgmental space where where diversities are accepted and embraced uh we are we are proud that we were successfully able to attract the diverse uh diaspora uh, from around 11 countries uh in one group and all of them having different concerns and different ideas and they all came together uh, uh shared their ideas and we all worked on a sem- uh, worked on on the path and now we have projects running in the intersections of climate change and human rights uh which are which are very much different from each other but all have the similar goals <laughs> and the last point the last point which is really important and very unique is there is no single isolated solutions to any problem whether it's uh, climate change or human right or uh, any local community level problem water problem water crisis food hunger crisis there is no single isolated solutions to is there there has to be multiple uh, there has to be like more than one solutions uh, combined together to make a sustainable and ongoing for a long term solution <clears throat> so it's very important to learn these points and uh, be open to suggestions to uh, embrace diversity and have empathy because empathy is the driver of the change like if you don't have empathy for for what you are working for and for whom you are working for uh it's it's very unlikely that the change would ever happen to begin the change and to uh have the change within yourself to begin it within yourself uh empathy is the key and to instill it in the others the change again empathy is the key to to be able to empathize for others suffering is a very important thing to do that's all thank you so much